And for too long, America tried wishing away the dangers of a radical Islamism as poisoning both of Islam's great Sunni and Shia streams, a radicalism that seeks to crush every form of dissent and divergence. Previous administrations' desire for peace at any price drove them to strike a devil's bargain with our common enemy, the enemy of our allies and partners in the Middle East. But since day one of this administration, President Trump promised to stand with the good people of Iran and stand up to their oppressors. And that's just what we've done. President Trump kept his word when he withdrew the United States of America from the disastrous Iran nuclear deal. The so-called Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action did not prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon. It merely delayed the day when that vile regime would gain access to the world's deadliest weapons. And remarkably, the universal view of those who spoke last night at this very conference was that Iran has actually become more aggressive since the JCPOA was signed, not less. The United States reimposed sanctions that should never have been lifted in the first place. And we've launched a new campaign to prevent the regime from financing its trademark terror and destruction around the world. Since then, the UAE has canceled its imports of Iranian condensate. Bahrain is exposing the Iran Revolutionary Guard Corps proxies active in its country and is working to stop Iran's illicit maritime activities in the region. And countries across the globe are working toward cutting Iranian oil imports to zero. But sadly, some of our leading European partners have not been nearly as cooperative. In fact, they've led the effort to create mechanisms to break up our sanctions. Just two weeks ago, Germany, France, and the United Kingdom announced the creation of a special financing mechanism designed to oversee a mirror image transaction that would replace sanctionable international payments between EU businesses and Iran. They call this scheme a special purpose vehicle. We call it an effort to break American sanctions against Iran's murderous revolutionary regime. It's an ill-advised step that will only strengthen Iran, weaken the EU, and create still more distance between Europe and the United States. Some argue that Iran is in technical compliance with the narrow terms of the deal, but compliance is not the issue. The deal is the issue. Today, America's economic sanctions on Iran are the toughest in history and will get tougher still unless and until Iran changes its dangerous and destabilizing behavior. As President Trump has said, there's been enough suffering, death, and destruction. Let it end now. The time has come for our European partners to stand with us and the Iranian people, to stand with our allies and friends in the region. The time has come for our European partners to withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal and join with us as we bring the economic and diplomatic pressure necessary to give the Iranian people, the region, and the world the peace, security, and freedom they deserve. We must not let this opportunity slip from our hands. In June 2009, after the Iranian regime stole an election to maintain its grip on power, the previous administration refused to raise its voice when the Iranian people took to the streets in what came to be known as the Green Movement. It wasn't until the Congress acted that the United States declared its support for the Iranian people. As a member of Congress, it was my privilege to introduce a bipartisan resolution that passed overwhelmingly that showed the support of the American people. And only then did our administration follow. But soon the Ayatollahs and their henchmen used the cover of the world's timidity to murder, imprison, and terrify freedom-loving Iranians. The world missed an opportunity last time to confront the regime, but not this time. This time, all of us must stand strong. 
as Iran's economy continues to plummet, as the people of Iran take to the streets, freedom-loving nations must stand together to hold the Iranian regime accountable for the evil and violence it's inflicted on its people, on the region, and the wider world. So to all of you gathered here who share this vision for peace and security across the Middle East, I make you a promise. On behalf of the President of the United States and the American people, if you stand with us in this noble cause, we will stand with you. Together we will embrace a shared future, building on the best traditions of the past. It's remarkable to think that nearly 4,000 years ago, a man was called to leave his home in the Ur of the Chaldeans and make a long journey north. He wore no crown, he commanded no armies, he performed no miracles, he delivered no prophecies, yet to him was promised in those ancient words, descendants as numerous as the stars of the sky. Today, Jews, Christians, and Muslims, more than half of the population of the earth and nearly all the people of the Middle East claim Abraham as their forefather in faith. And so he is. As we gather at this historic conference, I believe on that foundation of that Abrahamic tradition, we can find a firm foundation for a brighter future for all the peoples and all the faiths of the Middle East. And it doesn't just simply have to be a part of our imagination. It's actually happening even as we speak. We need look no further than the old city of Jerusalem as an example of what could be true for the region as a whole. There we see the followers of the three great religions in constant contact with one another. We see each faith come to life in new and renewed ways every day. At Haram al-Sharif, we see young Muslims, heads bowed in prayer. At the Church of the Sepulchre, we see a Christian child receiving the rite of baptism. At the Western Wall, we see a young Jewish boy being bar mitzvah. What we see there, we can achieve and live all across the Middle East. That's the vision that President Trump has. And that's the hope and aspiration of peace-loving people in our nation and around the world. So it's an honor to be with all of you today. To all of your excellencies who are gathered here. And to our host country, Poland, we say thanks. Thank you all again for being here. And to all who ever doubt whether peace could at last come to the Middle East, I think we would do well to look to a promise that was made to that man I referred to who made that journey so many centuries ago. It was a promise in those ancient words that I will surely bless you. I believe with all my heart we can claim that blessing anew for all the people of this region and the world, for ourselves and our posterity, if we claim it with faith and we claim it together. I believe God will surely bless us with peace. So let us begin. Thank you, and God bless you.